Hello, this is Chris Sartorial. In this video, I'll be demonstrating how to draft a woman's fitted front bodice sloper from body measurements. For this drafting method, it's important to draft the back bodice first. So if you have not watched part one, please do so. Okay, drafting the front bodice is very similar to drafting the back. Your first step is to draw a line equal to your front high point shoulder to waist measurement. Bottom in this case, which was 17 and a half inches. Then like we did with the back, I'm going to measure up from the bottom the distance to my bust apex point up from the waist, which was seven and a half. And I'm going to square a line. And that line should be equal to one to one quarter of your bust measurement. In this case, the bust measurement was 38, so one quarter of that is nine and a half inches. So I'm going to go out nine and a half. And then I'm going to add quarter. If you remember when we drafted the back, we subtracted a quarter. And that's because I want the front bodice to be slightly wider than the back bodice. Again, you can leave that step out, but I don't recommend it. Now I'm going to square a line at the bottom, which is where my waist is going to be. And that's going to be equal to one quarter of my waist measurement. The waist was 29, so one quarter of that is seven and a quarter. And again, I'm going to add a quarter. And just like we did with the back bodice, I want to add a waist dart here. And like the back, I'm going to make the waist dart one and one quarter inches deep. So I'm going to move this point outward one and one quarter inches. Now I can connect the waist to the bust for my side seam. In order to draw in the waist dart, I need to mark my apex point. Seven and a half between the apex points, so three and three quarter. And I'm going to square a line straight down. And like with the back, I'm going to measure half my uh, dart depth because my dart is one and a quarter inches. I'm going to mark five eighths either side of this line. On the back, we extended all the way to the bust level. But for the front bodice, you want the darts to finish a distance away from the apex. So I'm going to mark it about one and a quarter inches away from the apex. You could do one inch, or for larger garments, plus sizes, maybe one and three quarter, one and a half, or even as much as two inches. But I'm going to do one and a quarter and connect these three points. And there's my waist start. Now let's address the neck and shoulder. Like with the back, I'm going to square a line. And I'm going to measure that line to be half the across shoulder measurement. That was seven and a half inches. But I'm going to, in this case, because it's the front, I'm going to subtract a quarter inch. Remember I told you when we were measuring that we're, the human body is wider across the back shoulder than we are across the front shoulder. By about a half inch, or about 
one to one and a half centimeters. So I'm subtracting a quarter. This is extremely important. Don't leave it out. Don't let anyone ever tell you that the pattern for across the front shoulder should be the same as the back. That's wrong. Now like before, I'm going to square a line down here. And I'm going to mark a point at my shoulder slope distance, which was one and three eighths. Our shoulder seam length was five inches. So I'm going to place my ruler at this point here and angle upward until the five meets my shoulder line and connect the two. So this makes this indicates my side neck. Now I need to find the center front neck, so I'm going to measure up from the center front waist the distance to my center front neck, which was 14 and one quarter inches. Take my French curve and draw a nice curved line between these two points. And there's my front neck. Now we need to establish the across front. So I'm going to measure down five inches from the high point shoulder. square a line. Now if you'll remember when we did the back we brought this in a quarter here. But the human body is narrower across the front than we are across the back, especially a woman's bodice. So rather than coming in one quarter, I'm going to come in three quarters. Now I'm going to take my French curve and I'm going to draw a curved line. This point, the across front point, and almost to my side. I'm going to square it here. Now again, it looks like this is finished, but this front armhole is much too big. We need to, we're going to need to dart out some fullness, and I'm going to rotate some, the fullness into a side dart. How do we determine how long that this front armhole needs, needs to be? In other words, how much fullness do we need to take out of it? We determine that by measuring our back armhole. Now, I've already measured this back armhole, and it measures 9 inches. So the front armhole can measure no more than 9 inches in order to be properly balanced with the back armhole. In fact, for a fitted bodice, the front armhole should be slightly shorter than the back armhole, a quarter to a half inch shorter. So I'm going to measure my front armhole now. Going to walk my ruler. And it's measuring ten and three quarter inches. And my front measured nine, so I need to take a minimum of one and three quarter inches out of this armhole. I'm going to do so by a draw a line from my apex point to my armhole, and I'm going to measure approximately one and three quarter inches. Then I'm going to determine where my bust dart needs to go. I'm going to make it uh, about two inches below the armhole, and I'm going to again connect the apex to the side seam. 
Now I need to pivot this fullness out of the armhole into a dart at this location. I'm going to lift this off the table now. I'm going to cut this line I created from my bust, from my new dart. And I'm going to fold along this other line I drew with the armhole. Fold out approximately how much I need. You probably will not need to fold out the entire amount, because as you can see, I'll have to redraw this armhole. And you typically lose more as you recurve the armhole. So I'm gonna not, I'm gonna fold out not quite the full one and three quarter inches. And I'm going to redraw the lower part of this armhole. Okay, I have rotated sufficient fullness out of this armhole and into this new dart so that the armhole now measures eight and three quarter inches. Sometimes you have to adjust up and down. The first time you fold, you may take a little too much out and your armhole may be too short or it may not be short enough. So you might have to do a little shifting. You know, if the first time you fold it, it's too short, release more fullness. If the first time you fold it, it's too long, then put, uh, pivot more fullness into your dart. It should ideally measure slightly shorter than your front armhole. I have taped it now, and I've also taped a piece of paper behind my new dart, because the next thing I have to do now is shorten it the same distance from the apex that my waist dart is shortened. So one and one quarter inch. Mark that distance from the apex and draw lines to your new, to complete the new dart. And there's my side bus dart. You may want to true that dart up by folding it around this new fold line. In this case, it looks pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and straighten that out a little. Let's see, there's a ever so slight adjustment. So that more or less completes our front bodice. Again, like the back, you may want to true up your waist at a slight curve here. And also at the side. You'll probably also want to double check the curves of your front and back neck and armhole. So I'm going to fold this pattern, the front, along the shoulders line. And I can lay it against my back shoulder and check that my neckline has a nice, nice smooth curve going from front to back, and that my armhole curves smoothly. And I'm not seeing a point or a dimple at either place. If you do, smooth out your curves. Okay, that pretty much completes our pattern of both our front and our back. Now I'm going to add seam allowance to these patterns, cut them out, and sew them up.
Here is the bodice, all sewn and pinned up in the back. As you can see, for a first fit, it looks pretty good. Uh, some of the things you'll want to check when you do your first fitting is, is there sufficient ease allowed here? And this looks about right. Check your shoulder slope. You should have a little ease in that as well. This looks good, especially if you wanted to set a sleeve into this armhole. If you can pinch up too much here, then you'll need to make your shoulder more sloped. If it's tight here, or if your neck wants to ride up, then you'll need to make the shoulder more, the slope more shallow. Other than that, please, uh, if you try this method, let me know how it works out for you. Or if you'd like to see additional how-to pattern drafting videos. Thank you.